In the 1930s, there was this play called Gaslight, which depicted the story of a man who married a wealthy woman uh, with the idea of taking her money. And in order to do this, he manipulates her psychologically. He gets her to start thinking that she's crazy so that she'll hand her fortune over to him. Uh, when he leaves the house, he turns down the gas lamps in the house just a little bit and then tells her that she's seeing things. And she starts to believe it. She starts to become convinced of this. Uh, it keeps going where she's, he starts moving furniture and other things. And the wife starts to ask questions to the point where she thinks and believes that she is losing her mind. This is where we get our modern day term gaslighting from. Uh, when someone starts to question their own mind and their own sanity. Today, in our study of Exodus, you'll see how Pharaoh did this to the Israelites too. Okay, so it's time. Moses and Aaron, they go up to the Pharaoh and they ask the Pharaoh to let the Israelites go for the purpose of them going to worship God in the desert, in the wilderness. Now Pharaoh, Pharaoh's not gonna have any of it. And so Pharaoh instead, he looks at the Israelites and he looks at their taskmasters and their supervisors and he looks at them all and he says, you know what, you guys, you're lazy. You're lazy. I have been providing you the straw to make your brook quota for the day and you're not even keeping up with that. So now I'm not gonna provide the straw. So you guys need to double down and hustle up in your work. They need to double it up. What Pharaoh is doing, he is gaslighting them. <laughs> The Israelites, uh, they think about all their hustling that they need to do. They think about how they've maybe been lazy by what the Pharaoh is saying. And then they start to doubt uh, the promises that Moses and Aaron have told them that God has made upon them. They start to doubt that God is gonna deliver them. From, and they, so they double down in their brick production. They start to believe that it's Moses and Aaron's fault, uh, that they have more work on them. And they start to believe, honestly, that they are lazy. And in turn, Moses goes back to the Lord and looks at the Lord again and says, why did you even send me? He sees his work as a failure. He is doubting God's providence in all of this again. And it seems like almost in this chapter that Moses thinks that all he was supposed to do was go talk to Pharaoh and that the whole thing was going to be over, that it was just going to be done in quick order and that it would be all over and he could go back and tend to his sheep and return to his wife and all that. But you'll see in the sixth chapter that God really reaffirms Moses. God says all of this, maybe not, doesn't look like how you thought it was going to look, uh, but it is going to happen. That God will do what God has promised and then God will use Moses, what he called Moses, into what he was doing. Uh, this happens true for us sometimes, don't we? When we think that God has called us into something and then we get frustrated when the work isn't quick. We get frustrated and we think, God, you asked me to do this. Why am I not seeing any fruit of it right now? Sometimes God's story is a little bit longer than our story. But the Israelite people, the enslaved people, uh, they are going to have over and over again ask themselves, who are they going to trust? Are they going to trust Moses and Aaron, or that means the Lord? Or are they going to trust Pharaoh? Are they going to trust God, or are they going to trust this king that's been ruling over them for their whole entire life? In all honesty, I think we can ask ourselves that same question too. What are some of the ways that people in power or the forces of this world have gaslit you? What are some ways that you've seen your own thinking and bought into those false narratives that the world offers you? Things like uh, when we think our value is what we produce or when we think our worth is what we can offer or when we think our status is about what our title is or when we think our quality is about what we look like or when we think our goodness is about what we provide, or when we think our significance is about what we contribute, or what we think our virtue is about how pious we are, what we think our, our station is when it's all about what we own, what we think our reputation is is about what we do. My friends, when we believe into the lies of this world, we're being gaslit. We're believing all the pharaohs of this world. And what ends up happening, we become just like the Israelites do to Moses. We start to listen to the other voices, the voices of oppression, the voices of empire. And we start to want to do those things and we start to believe them. 
Uh, and at the same time, we doubt God's promises and claim on our lives. And so we double down on our brick making. We hustle harder and we work for achievement. We start working hard to prove that we are worth something in this world. We believe Pharaoh uh, that our worth is on what we accomplish rather than believing how much we are already worth to God. Hmm. As you dig into chapters five and six today, I want you to ask yourself these questions. Number one, what lies of the world do you find yourself actually believing in? And number two, uh, why do you think it's so convincing that we need to do more in order to find our worth in this world? All right, on your road to freedom, you can find out more resources on our uh, website, calvaryalex slash study, uh, and then get to your, all your resources and reading plan there. So glad that you're here. Uh, remember, God keeps God's promises to you.